In this video, I'm going to talk about my theory of dementia, blood pressure, and stroke. Now, this is just for information for you to go do more research. I'm not telling you that this is accepted in traditional medicine. I'm not telling you that um, this is the cure. I'm just giving you information so you can do your own research with your doctor's help. Okay? So this is my theory. Um, there's a lot of unknowns about dementia, but there's an interesting associating factor, and that is the buildup of calcium in the arteries of the brain. Also, it is a known fact that if your arteries are filled with calcium placking, the arteries get hard and the blood pressure goes up. So that's a big cause, because if you look at one of the medications for blood pressure, it's uh, calcium channel blockers. What are calcium channel blockers? They're medications that lower and block calcium. Interesting. Even magnesium is known to help blood pressure. Why? Because it lowers calcium. Strokes, vascular blood flow to the brain. If you clog up the arteries of the brain with calcium placking, which a lot of times uh, they find associated calcium, but they're not associated and the calcium is the thing that's keeping the arteries from being elastic in the brain and clogging up the blood flow to the brain and creating aneurysms. So you can also have injuries and other things, but the point is that I believe that the calcium is, the, is a primary cause of a lot of these problems. Just my theory on that. But very little attention is, is put on lowering calcium in the body, isn't it? It's like, what do people tell you to do? Take calcium. They're in a recent trial of many, many women postmenopausal, they found that women that take calcium for bone loss increase their chance of heart attacks by two times. So again, it's because the calcium plugs up the arteries, makes them hard, and there's no elasticity, so the pressure goes up. So all this attention is, is put on one thing, to lower your fats, right? Lower your fats, lower your cholesterol. But guess what? There are two vitamins, um, there's more, but there's primarily two vitamins that control the transportation of calcium through the body. One is vitamin D3 and one is vitamin K2. Vitamin D3 will increase the absorption of calcium in the small intestines by 22x. So that pulls the calcium into the intestine. But vitamin K2 takes that calcium from the soft tissues and pulls it into the bone. So K2 is the, is the main vitamin that cleans up the arteries of calcium, the soft tissues, including the joints, the eyes, the kidneys, the prostate, the liver. I mean, think about how many conditions occur with calcium. First of all, when you get older, you become stiff. That's in the joints. Um, you can have it on the eyes as cataracts, and the joints is arthritis, bursitis, tendinitis. Kidneys is kidney stone. Gallbladder is gallstone. And there's a lot of other uh, calcification in the breast. So one of the new tests that they're doing as probably a better predictor for heart attacks would be a calcium scan of the body in the arteries, in the coronary arteries in your heart. So again, there's a lot of attention being um, now shifted to calcium, but not a lot of attention putting on the fat-soluble vitamins that transport calcium. Um, lots of people, when they take K2, they start cleaning up the calcium, they feel the bottom of their teeth start becoming really like pearly whites because of it cleans all that calcium, which is basically the tartar. So in deficiencies of K2, you get tartar in the teeth, heart attacks, strokes, kidney problems, stiffness. That's just because the calcium is not transported. So where do you get vitamin K2? That's the big question. It's a fat-soluble vitamin, and you get it from grass-fed beef, grass-fed butter, grass-fed whole milk yogurt. It's in the fat, the exact thing that everyone's telling you to avoid for these three conditions. It's the thing that people need. It's in the saturated fats. It's not in the unsaturated fats. Grass-fed beef, butter, eggs, and beef, and, and cheese. Um, if, you, if you take a, I mean, what do people tell you to do? They tell you to avoid red meat. If you are going to have red meat, have lean red meat. If you go to the grocery store and look at all the yogurts, it's hard to find a whole milk yogurt. It's all low fat or no fat. Well, that's exactly what you need to start consuming if you want vitamin K2. Um, so I believe that this is the reason why the calcium is not transported 
uh, through the body. And it makes sense because it's date coincidence with the complete fear of consuming fats. All right? So I will put down below some ideas on what you can play around with with dosages of vitamin K2 and D and some eating principles. But you no longer have to be afraid of saturated fats, especially if you are consuming the right ones from grass-fed you know, butter and cheese and eggs and things like that. The only other thing that you want to look at is the amount of um, digestive juices that help digest these fat-soluble vitamins, and that comes through the gallbladder. And there's something called bile, B-I-L-E, that helps absorb it. So I'm not saying to go crazy and start eating all this fat. I'm just saying that you want to consume some of it. And if you have a hard time digesting it, it could be because either you, you don't have enough bile because you're not used to digesting the fats or you're missing a gallbladder, in which case you need to take some bile salts to put that back in to emulsify and break down and absorb these fat-soluble vitamins. So again, I believe this is the link that's been missing. And if someone's taking this, it doesn't work. You have to look at the ability to digest fats, and that would be the gallbladder. Um, and I create a lot of videos on that. But I just wanted to kind of give you that connection as a root cause. And to play around with it, talk to your doctor, see if it can help you. All right, so that's the summary of my theory on dementia, blood pressure, and stroke. And I will see you in the next video. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to the Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto intermittent fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes, learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special, if you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.